So apparently the executives from Warner Brothers went to visit Peter Jackson and talk about the upcoming The Lord of the Rings movies. Well, that's basically everything that this article says about it. But there is more than meets the eye. And what's that? Let's find out. Wes Halmin Freund and welcome to yet another video. Well then, my friends, there's a snippet of information that needs to be covered and talked about. Uh, but first I need to say, don't jump over the moon just yet and don't be excited. For those of you who have been following my channel for quite some time, uh, this will not be surprising, what, what I'm saying right here. And for those of you, or for those who are still not willing to comprehend the entire matter, and the facts, let me uh, go uh, into depth first. So, first I shall introduce uh, your good old European lord and where I uh, come from with uh, my stance upon the entire matter. And the stance upon the entire matter is, of course, no, thank you. We don't need any more Tolkien content. We don't need any more films. We don't need any more uh, TV shows. We really don't need any more video games. And let us now put aside the fact that it has been proved a fact that nothing new ends up being good. Look at the Rings of Power. Look at the Gollum video game. Look at the Magic the Gathering, uh, Lord of the Rings style uh, trading cards, so on and so forth. And, well, it's just not only concern Tolkien, but really anything made today. Look at what Netflix did to Witcher, uh, to one of my favorite uh, fantasy sagas by Andrzej Sapkowski, and we don't really even have to stick to fiction. Just look at what they did to historical characters like Jarl Hokun in the Vikings Valhalla TV show, or Cleopatra. Now, Shall I say more? Well, I will. So, where I come from is... I come from Central Europe. I come from the uh, the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, formerly known as Bohemia. Formerly a part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So, there is still a lot of that blood in our veins. Myself, my great-grandmother was an Austrian baroness. So, not only am I this uh, beautiful mixture of... Um, Slavic and Germanic blood, uh, but I am, all in all and all together, uh, a, a, a European, right? Uh, a man who has grown up on, uh, or, or, or who grew up listening to all kinds of old European folk tales, in many cases dating back centuries and centuries and centuries. I studied Old English and English literature at university. I am very well acquainted with uh, the Old English uh, poetry and prose. I uh, have delved into uh, even the Norse literature and uh, old Icelandic sagas and into other Germanic literatures like the Old High German literature, so on and so forth. And I am very well versed in uh, the literature, the old literature in my, of my own country and the history of my own country, which has got a beautiful medieval history. Now, in, in the Central and Western Europe, you can find glorious old castles. Even if they are, some of them are ruins, some of them have been kept or uh, rebuilt nicely. But it's, you, you travel to Europe, you travel through uh, the, uh, the Central and uh, Northern and Western Europe, and you relive history, ancient, old history. And all that, all that is beautifully, extraordinarily depicted in the works of John Ronald Rule Tolkien. It is a textbook example of old chivalric, uh, conservative, romantic fantasy. Medieval fantasy, high fantasy, very much different from uh, the, uh, I, for example, uh, Robert E. Howard's sword and sorcery genre, like uh, Conan the Barbarian, very much different from the uh, comedic humorous fantasy of uh, Terry Pratchett. I love both, but the high fantasy genre is what I really consider to be the closest to my heart because of all this. 
And now imagine that you see, or you have been observing the destruction of entertainment for years now. And I'm not only talking about the ancient uh, old stories that many people like me grew up listening to or watching or reading. I am talking about basically anything that goes back, not to the medieval times, but let's say to the 60s, 70s, 80s, and all the franchises that have come, in a lot of cases, from the United States of America. Like all those action films and science fiction films, of which I am a huge fan. And now imagine that you are being burned for years by a person, and that person being Hollywood in general. Would you believe that person to make a 180% uh, sorry degrees turn and suddenly make something bloody extraordinarily mind-blowing? No. I have spoken about, uh, about it many times. Even if, even if, and that's a, like just theoretical, even if they managed to somehow gather the original cast and crew and creators and screenwriters and actors and directors and producers of the Lord of the Rings trilogy from the early odds by Peter Jackson, they will never ever be able to replicate what they did back then, which is, what they did is, one of the best adaptations of a book ever made in the history of movie making. Not the most faithful there are more faithful adaptations, like I would say The Godfather, just my humble opinion, as far as the um, the faithfulness of the, of the film to the source material. I think that Godfather 1 is much more faithful to the book by Mario Puto than the Lord of the Rings trilogy is to the Lord of the Rings book by John Ronald R. Tolkien. Nevertheless, these were the, those three films by Peter Jackson were cinematic masterpieces. Excellent, excellent films, which they were not 100% faithful, but they adapted the source material with an utmost respect and a fair degree, very, very fair degree of faithfulness, which couldn't be replicated later. For 20 years, they have not been able to do that with anything that came out, not even The Hobbit. And The Hobbit was the last direct or attempt of direct adaptation of Tolkien's books. Now, nothing can be done faithfully. And from what uh, has come out, as far as the information goes, they are not trying to adapt anything. They are trying to expand upon the stories that were written by Tolkien. Which is exactly what the Rings of Power did. They just acquired the rights to adapt the Lord of the Rings. They said they would only adapt the appendices to the Lord of the Rings. Bloody notes at the end of the book. It's basically notes. Took a name here and there. Took an event here and there. And built their own story. Shitty story around it. That's all they did. With the War of the Rohirrim. We already know. And I have covered in my last video. It is not going to be an adaptation of the three paragraphs. In the appendices to the Lord of the Rings. They are going to expand upon those three paragraphs in the appendices. They are going to focus on the female aspect. They are going to make the daughter, the originally unnamed daughter of Helm Hammerhand, into uh, a, uh, a strong independent female warrior called Hera, which is a Greek name, not an Anglo-Saxon name. That is... Rohirrim, they are absolutely going to do things that did not happen in the Appendix A. From what I've heard, they are going to destroy Edoras 
and other things like that. So, and it is the, a fact that Philippa Boyens is involved. One of the three great writers of the Lord of, of the Lord of the Rings film trilogy. You can't really trust Hollywood today. And yes, I know there are a lot of people out there listening to my videos saying that, you know, you are uh, giving them the benefit of the doubt and you are being cautiously optimistic. All right, I'm fine. I'm good for you. Yes, good. Fine. I, I will not try to make you think otherwise. I'm just asking you to do one thing, all right? Remember what I said. Remember what European law said. And when those movies come out in a couple of years, you will say, in my humble opinion, that I was right. All right, then. So let me know in the comments down below what you think, and that will be all. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm out of here.